You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. We're coming to the third day of KubeCon, including the pre day, I guess. I get them all mixed up. <laughs> But I'm here with Melissa Rood, and Melissa is Vice President of Sales at SWIM. Nice to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, your associate was telling a story about mainframes. Right. And, you know, it's kind of a tragic story about, you know, losing your, your mainframes in a, you know, an incident like the World Trade Center bombing. Right. Right? But that happened. Yes. And it's been 24 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're still not really updated with their documentation. Right. And so you've come in and helped them out. And you do it through a combination of static analysis and AI. Correct. And so what does that mean? What does that require sure. when you're thinking about mainframes? Yeah, so mainframes in general have become a black box for a lot of organizations. There's a lot of mainframe code out there, and most of those developers who originally wrote it 30, 40 years ago are no longer with the organization. So it's a giant black box for a lot of organizations. They know that there's code in there. They know that it's working for them, but they don't know what's in it. Uh, and that's a big problem as these uh, developers retire, as they need to update their systems, move to the cloud, they don't understand the business logic. So we help them to uncover the business logic, what's actually happening in these mainframes so that they can more confidently and efficiently modernize these systems. So how do you use static analysis and AI for that? Sure, so LLMs right now are not well trained on those legacy languages like COBOL, like PL1, like assembly. They, there's not a lot of open source code out there in those languages. So if you throw all of this code at an LLM, it's not going to give you very good results. Uh, so we use static analysis, deterministic methodologies first to actually analyze the entire code base, make sense of it, structure it, uh, and essentially scaffold out different documents that we then use LLMs to do the natural language translation for. So we have human readable documents that we can give to the developers or the business analysts looking at those programs, at those systems, that then they understand the business logic, the business rules, and can use that in their modernization efforts. So documentation can be relatively static in itself. Sure. So how do you keep it updated yeah. for like those? Because I'm sure like there's several phases of discovery mm -hmm. when you're working with old mainframe environments. Right. Yeah, a lot of these code bases are not static. Sometimes they're changing. We might still be bug fixing on them. So these code bases do change or parts of them have been moved already and there's certain aspects that have or haven't. All of our documentation is connected to the code. So anytime code is being referenced in the form of actual snippets of code or even in descriptions, we've linked some of the description elements or tokens to the code itself. And then we have a proprietary auto-sync technology that anytime the code changes, we automatically sync the documents to reflect those changes without manual intervention. So humans don't need to know they broke something in a document when they make a code change. We'll dynamically update those documents for them. And that way, anytime they access the document, they know this is reliable. This is the latest from the current state of the code base. So, the, so almost like that syncing technology is then looking at the documentation all the time mm -hmm. and looking at the code base and then providing the synchronization with that? Exactly, and it can happen locally in an IDE plugin that we have, or we can also embed in the CI pipeline. So with every code commit in traditional um, code environments, in traditional SDLC, we can uh, basically use our CLI tool to track with every commit. If that commit has affected documentation, we can notify you, we could make the change, we could even block pull requests to enforce those updates. Okay, so that, so tell me, take, take me from that point, once yeah. you start doing that, you know, if a company has been using the same mainframes for sure. you know, more than two decades, then mm -hmm. what are they doing once they get through that static analysis and using your, your, your your AI technology. I'm not sure what the AI technology is, but yeah. maybe you could help with, with that too. Sure, so the AI technology we use right now are standard LLMs, so we're not actually tied to a specific LLM. Right. And often for these companies, this code is sensitive, so we can actually connect with a company-hosted LLM if uh -huh. they're using Azure OpenAI, for example. The static analysis runs locally on a developer's machine, and then we connect with their LLM, and the whole loop happens within their network. 
Um, and from there, uh, depends on what the company wants to do with that information. Some companies keep it on the mainframe and they just need to understand the business logic better because the COBOL engineering workforce is sort of a dying breed. Um, there aren't very many people coming out of university who have a COBOL background to come join those companies. So better understanding the business logic is essential. Um, and then other companies are choosing to modernize or move some of this code either into the cloud or tra translating the language into more modern languages. So having the business logic there to make those decisions uh, more efficiently with less risk is really our aim. So does this relieve then the crisis then with moving off of mainframe to some extent? Because that, that's why like payroll systems yeah. often don't ever move off the mainframe. Right. Yeah, a lot of it is fear-based. If you touch something that you don't understand, you don't know what the consequences of that might be. So we're trying to reduce the fear from that aspect. Also, a lot of these modernization projects fail over time because they can't understand fully exactly what the business logic of these programs are. I think it's something like 79% of modernization projects off of mainframe fail. Wow. So trying to make that process obviously more accurate, but also more efficient, happen faster. What's your success rate then? So we're, we're relatively new in this space. We've only uh, been working on this particular use case for about six months now. Uh, we do a lot of customization with our clients. So the accuracy of the documents is quite strong. Uh, we haven't gone through a full modernization process because that takes much longer. How long do they take? Depends on the organization. Sometimes it's a years long process. If it's millions and millions of lines of code, it might take them many years to actually officially migrate over. Um, but from a technology standpoint for us, it takes between a few hours to uh, a few weeks potentially to get a full picture of the business logic. So what phase are you in right now mm -hmm. with projects that you started? Yeah, so we have a few active pilots running uh, with a customer base where we initially do a six week period in the beginning where we'll customize to a specific client's needs, both on their frameworks of their code, but also documentation templates or types of information they need to extract. Um, that six week process, by the end of it, we turn it on for the rest of the code base and it happens within a few hours. Okay, okay, and so, uh so you're in the process of working with these clients. Nothing has outcome from it, right? Not yet. Uh, we do have some sort of um, micro um, statistics, I guess you could say. Um, so coverage-wise, we've done this on code bases that are up to 10 million lines of code, and it's worked successfully. Um, from a timing perspective, um, we have some companies saying it might take them two to three weeks to document one single program manually. We can do that in a few minutes. Um, so from an efficiency standpoint, they're getting valuable insights from us almost immediately. SWIM has been doing this for six months, this mainframe work. Mm -hmm. What were you doing prior to that? Yeah, so we've always been a documentation solution. Um, the sort of foundation of what we do is in documentation and keeping documentation up to date, as we discussed. Um, we've added more and more AI elements into that. But usually when we were working with documentation previously, we're not coming into companies that have no code already and are starting documenting from scratch. They usually have quite a lot of existing code that needs to. we need to look backwards and backfill that documentation. And that's where we saw a real gap in the market was being able to analyze code, backfill documentation gaps for large existing code bases where business logic has been lost. Mm -hmm. And so that business you were in before was a lot about developer uh, developer centric focus on like mm -hmm. helping generate right uh, documentation for code yeah have you been using that existing technology absolutely yeah so it's still the foundation of what we do both uh, creating maintaining and finding documentation more easily we still do all of that um, but now we can also look backwards and backfill documentation well, Melissa, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk sure. with us today. I've been really, really appreciated. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.